Hey, Steve from Guitar Zoom here. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the third video. Um, I've already done one video. The first video was about uh, chord practicing and tips about how to optimize your chords. The second video that I did was about rhythm. And if you haven't seen those videos, I'd strongly recommend that you go back and you check those out. Well, in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start learning how to put all of this together. Now, before we get started here, what I need you to understand is if if we're going to try and put this together, we've decided on some chords that we're going to play, whether it's a song, uh, whether it's just a practice that we're going to do, but we've decided on some chords that we're going to use, and we've decided on a tempo or a speed of the song. Um, again, we're going to be talking all of, ab about these sorts of things. I've got a, a guitar course called, called How to Play Guitar in Eight Weeks, and it's modeled after my guitar classes that I do. So it's a great thing to to learn how to play, learn how to put all this stuff together and have some fun. So do me a favor, if it sounds like something that might benefit you, check out the link. There's gonna be a link somewhere near this video that you can learn more about the guitar course and see if it's something that works for you. So what I found with beginner students a lot of times is that they don't really know how to practice rhythm and chords. And that's why I made those first two videos. Well, if we've really been practicing those things and it's feeling pretty good, the next step is trying to learn how to put them together. So it, I'm, if I'm talking about this and you haven't seen the first two videos, it might benefit you to watch those, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is let's just say I choose two chords. Let's say I'm using D and A like I did in the first video, okay? And I've been practicing bouncing these. I've been, been bouncing them individually. I've been bouncing them back and forth, which is what I refer to as lift and shift, which is in the, uh, the beginner guitar course, all of that sort of thing. And they're feeling pretty good, okay? It's, it's becoming more automated and um, I don't have to think about them as much, right? And then over here, I've been practicing all of these different kinds of strumming things and I've got a strumming pattern that I like, right? I've got down, 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 up, down, or something like that, okay? So that's a, that's a fine strumming pattern for us to use for this. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to learn that my brain really can't think about these two things at the sec at the same time. So something's got to be automated or all of it has got to be automated for this to actually work. But it does feel weird when you first start doing it. So always remember that speed is kind of your enemy at this point. The faster you go, the harder it's going to be. And what happens a lot is when we make a mistake, we have a tendency of always wanting to speed up. We get frustrated and anxious. And so it, without even realizing, we go faster. And that just makes things worse. And then we get frustrated and we want to put the guitar down and I don't know, go vent, right? So instead of doing that, what we need to, to keep track of is that we're just, we need to relax, okay? Go as slow as you need to. There's no ego in this stuff, okay? It has nothing to do with that. Do what you need to do to get the job done. That's what you need to do. So if you have to slow down a little bit, that's fine, okay? So what I want you to understand, I'm going to do this strum now and I'm gonna do these chords at the same time. So I'm going to do that pattern over each one of these chords. Now, what I want you to understand is that as I'm putting these together, okay, this hand doesn't stop. Remember I talked about the maraca movement in the second video? You don't stop, okay? This thing just needs to learn to find it find the flow and just keep going and the movement that's happening over here is actually happening on the very last beat when I play down 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 up down as soon as I play that last down I'm shifting I'm lifting and shifting to that next chord and I want to learn to make this feel very natural so if I need to slow down a little bit it's it's perfectly fine Okay. Now it might feel a bit robotic when you first start learning how to do it and that's okay. Your hands have got to learn to work together, right? We talked about the two halves of the brain, how this one is a little bit more analytical, right? It's black or white. D is correct or it's not, right? Where the strum sometimes can be a little bit different because there's a little bit more creative flow to the way that you're strumming and all these different kinds of things. And of course, as you keep studying this, which we will in the in the guitar course, you're gonna learn a lot of different things that you can do to make your strumming sound far more authentic and organic and not just strumming patterns. But for now, this will work. 
So the trick comes when you, you do a strumming pattern, for instance, where instead of ending on a down like I was doing, I'm going to play down up. So watch this. If I was to go down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Okay. So I've got that up at the end. Now this is where people get confused. For most players, and again, I'm, I'm trying to be as honest as I can with this sort of thing. When you're changing chords, what you're not trying to do is change chords in between a 16th note, you know, distance of strumming between your strums. Because watch this. If I do this, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So think about the speed of that. Now I'm going to try and switch chords in between that last up and that next down. Like, <laughs> even if I could do it, okay, it sounds silly and it looks like, you know, you're all of a sudden just kind of losing it there for a second while you're trying to move these chords. When you watch guitar players play, nobody does that. What's happening is you're just moving the chords as casual as you ever did. But generally what's happening is there might be a strum in there, namely that up strum at the very end, where you're actually playing the strum, but you're doing it while you're lifting and shifting to the next chord. So what's actually happening for that one strum is you're strumming the strings open. But you don't really notice it when you're listening. You've heard it a million times when you've listened to songs or other guitar players play. It happens. It's a natural thing. But you've never noticed it because it sounds natural. So if I do this, watch. See, now you're hearing it. I'm not making a point. When I do that last up strum, I'm not making a point to strum it harder or softer or anything. I'm just letting the strum happen, that maraca thing we talked about, right? I'm just letting it happen. Um, but the same thing's happening over here. As I move my chords, I'm just moving it in the natural motion that I've created for myself between the chords. So when you first try and do this, it feels a little weird because it feels like you're like if I did the slow, it feels like I'm forcing that up strum when I'm not playing, right? If I do this. But if we can learn how to do exactly what I just did there, slow, even though it sounds a little bit weird, because if I was really playing that slow, I wouldn't have to move these that slow, right? I could move them faster, even though my tempo is slower. But it's a nice place to start to learn how to practice that way, forcing yourself to play that up strum while you're lifting your fingers and moving because as you get faster, which is a more realistic tempo. See what I mean? It's just, it becomes a very natural sound as you keep practicing it. So that's the third video that I want you to think about a little bit and see if maybe this stuff can benefit you and help you in your practice of chords and rhythm and then ultimately trying to connect those two things together. And if it does seem like something that's helping you, do me a huge favor and uh, click on the link near this video and check out the guitar course, uh, how to play guitar in eight weeks and see if it's something that might benefit you. All right. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.